because this model was an electric brougham and noiseless. However, we are not so much concerned with the merits of the veteran car as with, on this occasion, its source of power, the sun. For this is the world's first solar car, powered by a 10,000 cell panel on the roof, brought over from the United States by scientist and pioneer in this sphere, Dr. Charles Escoffery, to illustrate the potential of solar energy. The silicon cells convert heat into electric power, which is then stored in the car's batteries, and with the present roof panel, it takes between 8 and 10 hours of sunlight to provide enough power for an hour's driving at 20 miles an hour. So this is where I currently have chargers, left side of America. That little dot, and here's the area that we need to to get them, and maybe a Sonic. Probably a Sonic, we'll scratch that for now. But here are all the areas we have solar, portable chargers, inverters, things like that. Say you wanna visit your friend and he lives really down south. You can't just drive on down there, you're gonna to have to charge somewhere on the way back. But there's only a charger on the tip of the south coast. So before you head on back, you got a low battery and you're gonna to have to travel further to go all the way back home. That's wasting time, that's wasting resources. These are the main power companies in California. We got SDG&E, PG&E, and Doofenshmirtz. And they pay you one third of a penny per kilowatt hour. And in California, we're paying on average 40, 45 cents to them for the same power. Kind of a ripoff. So we had an M2.0 and now we're on to 3.0. Um, what is it? They're trying to justify it with a set of laws and so they can point and be like, hey, no, it's it's the rules here. That's that's what we're working with. So instead of SD Genie giving people nothing, they put a law in the place that says you gotta give them something, and they've slowly been tacking it back. They're trying to move people into solar sooner. So if you get solar panels now, you'll be on NEM 3.0. And eventually when NEM 4.0 and you comes out and you get absolutely even less than nothing, you'll still be on 3.0 because your solar panels are assigned to 3.0. SDG&E and all of the power companies know what's going on. They know that once everyone gets solar, they're no longer going to be needed, at least for the electricity aspect. And in the long run, people aren't going to be using gas for things like washing machines and water heaters and whatever you still have. It's kind of archaic at this point. We're, we're moving on, especially when electricity is going to be so much cheaper. So as soon as that happens, they have no more income. So they're tacking people into a, a contract now that will keep them afloat in the future so their investors don't explode right now. The big change from 2.0 to 3.0 was that they dropped the buyback from 3 cents to 0.3 cents. So you're no longer, you're making 10x less, which is kind of a lot. And then also it doesn't carry on. It's not a true buyback, it's a credit. So certain areas have specific length and how long that lasts, but generally it, it doesn't last past the season. So here's where DigiLeaf comes in. You can sell your power back for 40 cents. Uh, when people charge their cars, you're charging between at the lowest 40 cents and then upwards, I've paid 65 at places during peak hours. And so if you have an Airbnb or something in a nice location, a parking lot, this is a passive way to make income. Time for the fun stuff. DigiLeaf is on the Algorand blockchain, cryptocurrency. So, DigiLeaf solar panels make Leaf coins. Those Leaf coins you can use to charge your car at DigiLeaf stations or trade with other coins on the blockchain just like any normal coin. Then, with your DigiLeaf charger, you can also earn Leaf coins and sell those for profit, buy more hardware, do whatever you'd like to do. The General idea with this is as more people use the token, the token transaction volume will go up and it will actually one, serve a purpose and then two, hold a steady value based on how often people are using electric vehicles. So as the use of electric vehicles go up, so will the coin price. It won't be dependent on random memes or crazy stuff. It will actually be based on a usable utility that isn't just using a bunch of power to perform transactions, but actually giving something back to society 
and helping decentralize the actual grid, not just a decentralized coin, but a decentralized power grid. But for real, I'm not posting this here because I want you guys to buy the coin. I'm posting this here to walk you through what I'm working on and to show you like something I think is cool. This is a project I've been working on for a while. So subscribe, let's get this out to some more people. I'll keep you guys updated and keep giving you guys some more information, walk you through all the different parts of it. Cause this is kind of part one. There's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm.